It was about lightening the mood and making people laugh. It was 1982. I'm Yakov Smirnov, and you're watching Comedy for the Ages. I felt happy when people were laughing around me, and so creating laughter was kind of addicting. Smirnov felt that way ever since he was a boy living with his parents and nine other families in a communal apartment in Odessa, Ukraine. We shared one bedroom, and uh, my parents, when they wanted to be romantic, they would send me to look out the window. And uh, then my dad would say, so what do you see in the window? I said, our neighbor's being romantic. And <laughs> he said, how can you tell? I said, because their son is looking at me. And that's how I got probably my one of my first laughs from my parents, and and that kind of changed my whole life because uh, I wanted to get more laughs from my classmates, uh, my friends, and so that's kind of what guided me to comedy. He honed his comedic skills by listening to mostly non-existent entertainment programs on Soviet government radio. On Sunday morning, they would have. Uh, a comedian sometimes do a skit for five minutes. And that was very inspiring because uh, I would memorize it by Tuesday. I would go to a small club where I was like a regular, and at that club I would be able to tell that routine and it would get laughs. And that was helping me again get the confidence of being funny. After Soviet military school, Smirnov went to college to become an art teacher, all the while doing stand-up. I start working on the cruise ships on the Black Sea, and I joke about it, as I said, it's called Love Barge. Speaking no English, he met Americans and other Westerners, soon realizing laughter was a language everyone understood. Facial expression and the timing, something was making them laugh. And that's where I decided that I wanted to, to try to get out and come to America. By 1977, at the age of 26, Yakov and his parents were living in New York. I started learning English uh, as a bar boy and a bartender. And they would say, oh, where are you from? And I'd say, from the Soviet Union. And uh, is your real name Yakov Smirnov? And I would say, no, it's Jack Daniels and I would get a laugh, and then they would leave me a tip, and that told me, oh, I was funny. In 1986, he became a U.S. citizen and was sworn in by Chief Justice Warren Burger. When he said, my fellow Americans, I'm like, wow, this is, that's me, he's talking to me. And the first thought from my mind as a new American was, I don't like those foreigners. <laughs> they come here and take our jobs. <laughs> So I knew I was an American at that point. After being in New York for a while, Yakov headed west with a plan. I had two weeks to become a star and then come back and buy uh, an apartment on Fifth Avenue for my parents. It was very specific. He got an audition at the famous comedy store in Hollywood, where owner Mitzi Shore liked his act and invited him back the next night. I came back and I sit in the back of the comedy store and the first person that goes on stage is Robin Williams, second was Billy Crystal, third was David Letterman, then Richard Pryor came and I'm going, I'm ahead of schedule. I made it already. I'm in the right place. She likes me. She likes these other people. I'm in the good spot. Smirnoff stayed in LA, bringing his parents there too. He worked at the comedy store which led to his first big break. Robin Williams is coming to the show to see me, and he is bringing Paul Mazursky, who was doing a movie Moscow on the Hudson at that time. Smirnoff was hired. All of a sudden, out of nothing, I was making a major motion picture, and it was successful, and then a uh, movie, Money Pit, with uh, Tom Hanks came up, and Richard Pryor was doing Brewster's Millions, and they hired me to do that. What a country, America, I love it! I honestly did not realize how lucky I was to be in that spot, and 
how lucky I was to be discovered that quickly. His laugh, thick Russian accent, and overall likability landed him more movies and sitcoms, including What a Country, his signature line. He'd forge a friendship with Ronald Reagan, helping write jokes for him. But Smirnoff says he owes much of his success to the 1985 Miller Lite commercial. In America, there is plenty of light beer, and you can always find a party. In Russia, party always finds you. <laughs> Even Johnny Carson liked it. There was a uh, Tonight Show, and it uh, got a great response. And Johnny Carson invited me to sit on the couch with him, which uh, was a great surprise to me. And before he said anything, I said, uh, Johnny, you know, in America, you have things we never had in Russia, like policemen have warning shots. And he almost fell off the chair. Soon after the Cold War ended, the Soviet Union collapsed, and so did Smirnov's career. David Letterman had a top 10 list on the night that the Soviet Union collapsed uh, of 10 things now that will happen, that mm, there is no more Soviet Union, and I made number one on the list, Yakov Smirnov will be out of work. And I thought it was funny. Six months later, I wasn't laughing. So in 1993, he moved to Branson, Missouri, buying a 2,000-seat theater where he performed his own comedic variety show for more than 20 years. On tour these days, Smirnoff is reintroducing himself as a professor of love and laughter. <laughs>